You want me to do it? This is episode yep. 134 of Seti Bimko Part 2, The Revenge. And this week from Utah, I picked a movie called The Boogans. And George is going to say it's called Bogans, but I'm no, calling it The Boogans. I'm pretty sure it's The Boogans. <laughs> oh, okay. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Everything we say after this depends on the fact that it's pronounced The Boogans. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, okay. I say Boogans, you say Boogans. Okay. Do you say Booger or boogie? Booger. booger. <laughs> boogie. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, we'll get to all that. Yeah. But as you know, I ask an age-old question about revenge, George. And this one, people have to know the history. <laughs> and you know this history. We all know that the oh, teddy yeah. bear is named after Teddy Roosevelt, the 26th. Just from, you need to know your history for this. Yeah. The teddy bear is named after Teddy Roosevelt, 26th president of the United States. Right? We know that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Or yes, after the bear, he spared. He didn't kill it. All the bears he did uh, kill. Well, it's it's named after him because he didn't kill this bear. It was a little bear yeah. tree that Sorry. was tied to a tree. And they're like, hey, Teddy, oh. you want to kill you? He goes, what do you think I am, a bully? Yeah, I didn't know it was tied to a tree. That's terrible. I, it was either tied to a tree or like, or treed. It was like, it was a little baby bear. It was like, well, cute. Well, did he, Teddy, did he ever get revenge uh-huh. on the toy maker, Morris Mitchin? He's the creator of Ideal Toys. That's who made the teddy bear. Uh. Did he uh. get revenge on him for his next horrible failure of an idea. It was a puppet called Edith the Frog, named after Teddy's second wife, Edith Kermit Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> it's Seti Bimco Part 2, The Revenge, the show where we create revenge sequels that nobody wanted. It's Seti Bimco right. Part 2, The Revenge. You know the whole concept. We're going to make a revenge story, a revenge movie that never existed for this movie right you, you already <laughs> yes heard as america you already heard it <laughs> yeah but come times. on yeah <laughs> the world's as, prominent as a, no not the world's there might be other parts of it but as the country's prominent you know foremost revenge theme podcast we craft revenge theme sequels for movies that never had them yeah and uh, uh yeah, um, yeah and what happened to you this week That's, <laughs> what did happen this week oh george did you watch the penguin the brand new show I haven't see yeah. what am I going to do with you? I don't know. I, <laughs> I need you to hit the sweet spot of stuff. I can anything after 19 eight. Let's let's just shoot for some nice nineties to early two thousands references. Can I tell you one thing at the start of Joker? Yeah. It's not a spoiler, but a kid wait of Joker or penguin penguin penguin. Okay. A kid tries to steal Joker's um, penguins penguins. <laughs> Good Lord. T- tires. And he becomes Penguin's new like helper, like Robin. And we all uh-huh. know that after Dick Grayson gave up being Robin and became Nightwing, the new mm-hmm. Robin, J- Jason Todd, he was mm-hmm. stealing the Batmobile's tires, right? You're that's right. How, yeah, yeah, that's that's a That nod. is the, uh, Tim, I'm just going to be a nerd. That was his post-crisis origin. That was, yes, post-crisis Originally, origin. Originally, when he was first created, uh, he was uh, he had an, 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 an almost identical origin to Dick Grayson, where his parents mm. were acrobats who were helping Batman, and they were murdered by the fearsome killer Croc. I do remember that being. Yeah. Yeah. That but was then, what I read, and then, then the had, crisis happened. But then they had a call-in to see if you wanted Robin to live or die, and everybody wanted Robin to die. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if people you know that. Yeah, they actually had a one nine hundred number. So one nine hundred numbers back in the day were a way of making lots of money off phone calls. They were very expensive back then, as I recall. Yeah, and you, you would could... call up this number to either like the Joker murders Robin or Robin lives, and more people. I think yeah. you've actually admitted that you voted for him to die, right? <laughs> like five times, I called in. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the thing that's messed up, Tim, is I know in modern era, it was close. People talk about it like it came down. So you oh, may have right. personally. <laughs> Maybe. But here's what else I found. You know, he wasn't really ever going to be Robin after that again anyway. If Why he not? lived, he was going to be like have to give up because he was going to be too injured to continue. Why did he do it? Then they got Tim Drake and he was popular. Yeah, like he had his own Years book. later. Years later, though. And do people out there know that now Robin is actually Batman's son? From Maybe the, from from Talia, we're talking uh, geeky Talia, stuff. Talia you, can't, yeah. you can't keep up yeah. with me, George. That's who's Robin keep, now. Talia Al Ghul. I know that. Yes, Damian Wayne. Yeah. I know this shit. But here's the thing: <laughs> you get mad at me when I tie in our various revenge stories to Batman, and here well, you are throwing more Batman knowledge than anyone should ever know up I'm front. I'm setting you up. I know that's coming. I'm. No, it's not. I have a really good sequel. I wrote. To, let's get into this. I want to talk about this movie. I'm excited right. about this movie. You're Utah. 
The state that is represented is the 45th state to join our union, Utah. It was joined, it joined in 1896. The entire Ooh. state has a population of a little over, a little over 3 million. So about Ooh. equal to Brooklyn. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. There's a this fact is that I like, George. I like yeah, that this fact. Is a, these, here's another fact you're going to like. You know how we always remark that the capital is like some city we've never heard of and the biggest city is one we have heard of? This one's Salt Lake? It's Salt Lake for both, buddy. <laughs> the biggest city is the capital city for uh-huh. once. Salt Lake City. Now, this illustrates a real problem that Utah faces. It's state bird. The state of Utah, it's uh-huh. state bird, is the California gull. Ooh. What's up with that? It's an invasive species. I mean, you could, I mean, it's, it's its neighbor, but you couldn't even like, you couldn't even get like the, the Utah nut finch or something. It sucks. <laughs> State flower is something called the sago lily. I don't know what that is. No, poisonous. Something I know from doing the New York Times crossword puzzle all the time, because this is a clue like every fucking week. Bragging. It's named after the Utes. Uh, the Utes? You mean like from yeah. my cousin Vinny? Not those youths, too. I realized as I said a lot, I'm like, he's going to make a ni- <laughs> He's going to make a My Cousin Vinny joke. It's in the 80s, right? 90s. Yeah. Uh, I don't know when that is. Yeah, that sounds about right. Tim, congrats. You made a... I did. That's your, that's your weak spot. It's not 19... It's not the silent era of film, and it's not Young Sheldon. It like, falls in between. It's not 1977 Star Wars. So, and its nickname is the Beehive State. Funnily I, enough, they don't know why it's called that. They don't. I saw the flag. They put it right on their flag. Yeah, and they're not even sure why. They think it might be because Mormons are so hardworking. Oh, that's right. Uh, Brigham Young went here and established yep, Mormonism. Yep. And I'm, I'm being very careful not to make fun of Mormonism because it's easy to make fun of Mormonism. Tim, the Mormons oh, are yeah. your overlords, correct? They will. Uh, they own 24 and me, 23 and me. Do they really? I think they own, oh, they own some sort of genealogy thing, I think. Oh, I don't like that. No. It's being sold. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something that's kind of controversial, Tim. I don't like religions. Yeah, I know. I don't like religions owning stuff. Oh, I don't like religions is. having genetics. <laughs> I don't like the idea of the son of God coming down and talking to people. Well, I don't you... like the idea of a son of God. All the stuff that makes me antsy. Yep. That's what causes happens. trouble. Yeah. People rising from the dead like Rachel Ghoul. Yep, Rachel Ghoul. Um <laughs> with his Lazarus pit. <laughs> yes. Pretty sure Batman's come back in that at least once. I think that's Wait, maybe think so? how Jason Todd came back one time after he got beaten uh, to death. That's no. his trick. That's Jason Todd's party trick is he goes to the party and goes, who wants to see me die? Everybody raises their hand. He gets beaten <laughs> to death and he comes back cooler and more edgelordy. Now you're getting too deep. Now we're just now this is stuck in here, too. This is going to be our worst episode. All right. Uh, I didn't really go into the silly stuff too much for this one. Um, yeah. The first streetcar was in 1872 with horses. Nice. The 1889 version came in electric, and Tim, this is so exciting. They're both in Salt Lake City, obviously. Right. Salt Lake City still has a fucking streetcar. Nice. Electric the one? S li- it's the S line. It started in 2013. It actually came back. Oh, it came back. All right. Yeah, but it's in Salt Lake City. It runs for two miles along this road. It's like it's, They're very excited about it. Why just two miles? Come on. Because Salt Lake City is like so the, whole, the whole state has three million people. That's probably the size of the entire city. <laughs> Um, and then this is, this is exciting. I looked up first elevator in Salt Lake city Mm -hmm. and I found a whole big article. It's the first thing that comes up debunk debunking the Salt Lake temple myth. What's this myth? Is the, I'll tell you, Uh this is from the article quote, when Brigham Young was designing the Salt Lake temple, he felt inspired to leave empty shafts in several places in the temple. Nobody knew why they were put there originally, but years later, temple engineers discovered that the shafts were exactly the size needed to install the new technology of elevators in the temple. I see. And they hold this up as an example of Brigham Young being spoken directly to by God. Mm. And like it's proof. God told them, hey, elevators are going to get invented eventually. Mm -hmm. Leave room for them. But this article goes on to debunk. They're like, the fucking place took 40 years to build. (laughs) Build. The older parts don't have room for elevators. Yeah. The later parts that were built when, after elevators existed, had room for elevators. And everyone knows that elevators are the work of the devil anyway. That's true. That's true. Go listen to our previous Eddie Bimco episode, <laughs> Elevator, to learn just how they are the work of the devil. That's right. And then finally, uh, the state cryptid of Utah. Mm. It's a black person who isn't a Mormon. They see them. <laughs> oh, they no. don't know that they exist. <laughs> yeah, they just don't believe they're real. They only get blurry photos of them. Do we cut this out? 
No, we keep that in. <laughs> that's my one Mormonism dig. <laughs> okay. That's right. <laughs> yep. That's right. right. What do you think about the flag, Tim? Uh, I think, I don't know. Maybe bees powered the elevators there. That's all I can say. It's just, it's a beehive. I don't think it's a good flag. Look that. It's like, oh, a, you know, I thought it was, a, I thought it was okay. It's like a sticker. It, it wasn't like one of those, like we've, you know, Tim gives his analyses of the different flags. And mm. a lot of times it's like no third people. grade, not particularly talented kid draws two people kind of gesturing at like something. Yeah. I, this is better than that. I thought there'd be a picture of a Mormon shaking hands with, uh, with another Mormon, <laughs> two of his wives. Is that Mormon? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's, yeah. Wow. We should, how do we? All right, good. All right. Let's move on. Uh, Tim. No, let's take a moment. Actually. I want to pat ourselves in our back that with such an easy target as Mormonism, we really only took two swings. Really? It did. Yeah. Yeah. We're good. We're good people. Congratulations to us. And to all our Mormon listeners. Hey, congratulations on your strange fitting underwear. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about this movie, right? Okay, James. So I just want to James. Yeah, which you're going to mention. I'm excited about him. Star Trek all over this guy's IMDb. A lot of Star Trek. Lots of Star Trek. Yep, that's all. Okay, (laughs) a lot of good episodes. I want to mention something crazy. This movie is a Paramount Pictures release. Yeah. Which is stunning. And <laughs> yes. it came out in the year of 1981. Tim, you know what other Paramount Pictures release was released in 1981? Uh, oh, uh, Indiana Jones. Right. Raiders of the Lost Raiders Ark. Lost so Ark. this thing fucking shared a release slate with Raiders of the Lost Ark. Imagine that. And? Like a and? Stockholm. And? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Man. I'm just, I'm just I'm just picturing like this shareholders meeting that year. Like we're very excited. We've got a couple movies that we really think are going to to put Paramount on the on the map. First, George Lucas and Steven Spielberg mm-hmm. are teaming with star Harrison Ford to do Raiders of the Lost Ark. Everyone's like, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. And then <laughs> James L. Conway, who in the future is going to direct a bunch of Star Trek and a bunch of actors that do have blue links, but you probably haven't heard of, right. are going to be in Boogins, and everybody loses their shit. They're ripping up seats and throwing it. They're going, ah, the Boogins. <laughs> <laughs> what were you what was you gonna add there? <laughs> oh it's just that this came out three years after star wars before i forget before i forget uh, in fact f- or is that Tim, four is that four? four four years after star one, wars one two three yeah four sorry yeah however what month was released we don't know maybe wow. you know one year uh, before empire right or was empire uh, oh one year after empire after empire yep two years before return of the jedi <laughs> yes okay uh uh yeah uh six years before labyrinth <laughs> Should we just go on? Let's just like no. Do you want me yeah. to do the synopsis since I picked it? Yeah, do it. A small construction team of four men work to reopen an abandoned silver mine in a Colorado town. Even though I guess this is Utah. One hundred years after a mysterious massacre forced the military to shut it down. What they don't know is their excavating has inadvertently freed some predatory creatures lurking deep within the mines. Huh, that sounds like you copied that off of a... In, of like course off I of did. A, we, okay. <laughs> it's <laughs> good. It's a thing. It is, it is kind of... It, it does kind of hurt. Poor Utah doesn't even get to... No. It's regional film doesn't even... Even they're like, they're like, we're not in Utah. We're in Colorado. <laughs> <clears throat> Where did tremors, so, tremors, true, tremors take place? I want to say New Mexico. Yeah, okay. Let's see. <laughs> Beep, boop, boop. I got nothing to say about tremors. We should do Tremors. That's a great movie. But it's good. I can't. Eh, it's good. Nevada. I like movies where the film's falling apart. So this this was filmed well. I mean, lighting. I actually, I would say this movie, I, I straight up enjoyed. Um, eh, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was filmed well. Yeah, I, it's not. It's, well, actually, so I, I want to say a lot of things that they could have just put in there to make it better. That's all. We'll, we'll get to that, I guess. But I want to say, like, it, it does. It opens up with like a pretty good expedition exposition dump where yeah. over the credits we see old timey like newspaper clippings like of, of like prospectors yeah. and miners and such. Uh, as I wrote in my notes from around the last time Tim knew when to make references to. Yeah, this is and like, then we, the Ken Burns ripped this off. <laughs> it's totally Ken Burns. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's like we we learn we follow the story like there's this place called Silver City and there's a big silver mine, biggest silver mine ever discovered. And then there's like miners fear dead. It's like 29 miners go missing in 1912 and they seal up the mine. And this is all shown just in these things. And I'm watching this yeah. like 
and I, and I, I, I almost texted you like, good Lord, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> is this movie competent? <laughs> well, I'm going to say competent. it's definitely, it's definitely competent. I thought this movie was good. Okay. Like this is a, this is a movie I might watch again at some point. Like if really? it comes up and someone's like, oh no, you watch Boogans or like. But you mean good because some, some goofy stuff we'll talk about? Yeah. I mean, okay. I think it did a good job of suspense. Um, oh, I'm just, I'm drawn to the characters and they're. Probably the best goofiness. canine acting I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> There's a little dog named Tiger. That, that dog does a lot of plot covering. Yes. All right. And everyone in the movie hates the dog. As I feel bad for this dog. They never, I, they're just always. <laughs> I mean. Tiger's I, in the road running around. They're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> we'll get to Tiger. Tiger. <laughs> tiger is a liability. Um. So, yeah, uh, then we cut to modern day and like there's these two guys breaking a lock into what I thought was a ghost town building. But we soon learned was like a mine. It's two old guys who they I don't know their names and I don't care. Two old I guys. never bothered learning them. I wrote down <laughs> boss one and boss two. Yes. They're two of the four guys Tim mentioned. And then there's these two young guys who I. Mark and Roger. Bench, Mark and Roger. Roger. Mark has brown hair. Yeah. Roger two has white blonde guys. hair. Roger is the one who's like, I haven't been laid in 11 days and six hours. Yep. My balls are busting. Yeah. He's, uh, he's the he horny guy. <laughs> he, lo- he kind if you're trying to picture this guy in your head, he kind of looks like if Barney Rubble and Dana Carvey had a kid. Right. <laughs> and he's this little tiny guy. The other guy, I had a hard time placing him because at first I started calling him off-brand Will Ferrell. <laughs> then they called him off-brand John C. Riley. And then as the movie went on, I'm like, he's neither of those guys. Me and Mark? He's just... Yeah, he's just got brown hair. That's all you need to know about he, Mark. He's he looks got, he looks like the meme guy of thinking about something. I don't know what that meme's called. I mean, the guy whose eyes are blinking. The b- 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 yeah, b- that oh, guy. They, he blinks and looks at you like, what'd you just say? That yeah, meme, that meme. He, he does look like, like that. Yes, he also looks like the guy from um, from Mindhunter, the guy who played the main guy. I forgot his name. Oh, I forget. But like, if he let himself go a little bit. No offense, if you're the actor, you're like, that guy's just a very beautiful looking man. You're not on that level, so. <laughs> So, and they have to carry they have to carry the generators in and they're going they carry this generator into the mine and they're going through with the old guys. The old guys are we got to check the beams because there was the big, you know, fallen cave cave in. And like they they're like, these beams are bad. And they're pointed at these rotted beams. And then like <laughs> these rocks almost crush the guys. And this was my favorite line in the whole movie. Because the rocks almost come down yeah. and like the blonde guy is like. Do you smell anything? And his friend's like, "No, why?" That's he true. goes, "I just shit my pants." <laughs> That's your favorite line? Yeah, and the movie peaked early for me. He often says things like that. He often yeah. says, "Do you see anything?" I just <laughs> dosed your drink. <laughs> oh, I think he's saying, "I just shit my pants." <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you taste anything? Don't say it, man. Don't say it. <laughs> Do you feel anything? Because I'm emotionally dead inside. No, oh, sir. <laughs> he says stuff like that. He kind of is emotionally dead inside. He's, he is, um, I would say he's a bit of a sex pest, except for his eventual girlfriend. Oh, Mark, who, Mark isn't so much. Roger is. No, Are Mark is. Because uh, Roger what, is, is being set up with Trisha, and he's like, what, really? Another girl? Remember that Quasimodo you set me up with? And Roger's yeah, like, we, we don't, oh, she's got great tits. You should date her. That's his advice. About, about yeah, he, and he goes, wait, you've seen them? He goes, I've seen them both. Yes. It was in a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he only dates ladies with perfect breasts. Uh, for some reason, I wrote dynamite. Oh, because then they use dynamite to blow up in the mine. Did you write dynamite? I wrote that I sure everywhere. Did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did too, with the idea that it would remind me, but I wrote it so many times, I'm like, I don't know which one this is. <laughs> and then we see this old man who I wrote as a Max von Sydow oh, yeah. motherfucker is watching this from afar from a snowy ridge. And you're like, well, clearly. It's clearly he Tim's has favorite a- character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, his name. Yeah. Yeah. Of course he is, actually. He didn't have a newspaper. That's what bothered me. That's all. <laughs> There's that one CD as a newspaper, and if you look carefully, he has a Playboy inside of it. Does he? Yeah, it's a 1981 <laughs> issue of Playboy. Who's in it? It has a, a fetal scrotage. What? That's her. Yeah, that's her name. <laughs> well, come <Yeah>. on. <laughs> her <laughs> likes are bags of long clippings. Uh, her dislikes are paper cuts on her eyelids wow. and falling off of six-story buildings. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, weird shit, man. I'm glad you spotted it because I missed it yeah. totally. Yeah, it was, you know, I think I had a different cut than you. <laughs> I yeah. saw him reading, <laughs> reading the comics page. He was reading <laughs> Lockhorns. The Lockhorns, yeah. Yes. The Lockhorns who I repeatedly <laughs> asked to stop making fun of. Yeah, the Lockhorns. Fun. They've just been around forever. 
<laughs> Maybe he was reading Nancy. Nancy. I think Nancy's been around before like Bushmiller was even born. It just existed. Oh, that Nancy. I, you know, I was thinking Kathy for a oh, second. Kathy. I'm like, wait, so, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. he wouldn't like Kathy. She's too. Wait, too, how, I have a question. Old men don't how like did Kathy. Nancy exist? How did Nancy exist before Ernie Bushmiller, the creator I'm just of Nancy? Saying, it, did. it was just always there. It's it eternal. was always there. Oh, this is our heavy <laughs> comics lore episode. <laughs> so now, after this, they pull away for the night. Or for the day, it's still light out because suddenly it's night. And I wrote down a Julie Andrews looking woman almost crashes into a deer. Yep. She's driving down the road. She's like, oh, my God, which I wasn't <laughs> expecting her to have that accent. She looks like Julie Andrews. And she skids off the road into a ditch. And we see that she has a bumper sticker that says, I break for animals. Nice. I Tim, see that. It's, it's my list. Ooh. <clears throat> was it really These a bumper are, sticker? Yeah, there really was. And when she when she wrecks, she said, "Oh, I'll let you go your list." Wait, when she wrecks what? Well, you said she's Julie Andrews, so I assume this is a setup. So I'm not going to say when she missed. No, she said, my joke has doe. nothing to do with Julie Andrews. Doe, a deer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, what, what did, that would have been good, Tim. That go is ahead. good. That's a good joke. All right. So here are the other bumper stickers she had in her car. We they <laughs> zoom in on the one because it's funny because she broke for animals, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's one that says, uh, "Help! I'm trapped in the trunk." <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm there's another the one that says my other car is a DeLorean time machine. Ooh, OK. Yeah. I know that's a time that's anachronistic, <laughs> but it is a time machine, Tim. So they could go back in time to 1981. That's uh, this was my favorite one. This store bought mass manufactured bumper sticker perfectly encapsulates my identity as a unique and distinctive human being. That's long. <laughs> that was a, it, it was very small. T- <laughs> I had to freeze frame to read that one. <laughs> Uh, across on the other side of the car, it said Chewbacca is my co-pilot. Nice. I remember yep. those. I was around yeah. when they were. Wait, were those real? They probably were, right? Yeah. Oh, I thought I was being, I was making a clever those Star were, Wars those reference ones for that you. say, I break for Yoda. You know? I break. <laughs> <laughs> Question, side. <laughs> if you saw Yoda staying in the middle of the road and he wasn't looking at you, would you break for him? Would you gun no. it and just try to run him over? No. Break. What if it was Grogu? He would stop my car. I know. What if it's Grogu? Well, Grogu's He's not so looking. Cute. Why do you think I would want to kill these little cute characters? I don't know. Maybe they're like pinatas. Maybe if you smash a Grogu, <laughs> he's full of candy. <laughs> Maybe. I don't think so. All right. Here is another b- bumper sticker. Yes. It said, I break for roadkill. Oh, wait. I made a mistake. That was on Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s uh, car. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> and, and speaking of Kennedy, the oh, last no. bumper sticker on her car no. was Kennedy slash LBJ for president 1960. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it had a bullet hole in it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so, it was going to be I break for Lee Harvey Oswald cuz you know. Oh. Was a, uh, it, but it yeah. Uh, but, anyway, yeah, that would uh, be on uh, JFK's car. It's, yeah. No, uh, it wouldn't be. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> never mind. That'd be on Jack Ruby's car. <laughs> um so she skids off the road. We see the bumper stickers. She's walking down the street, kind of. She goes to this house. Now, because this is the era before cell phones, we're doing mm-hmm. this whole thing without any sort of um, – and they're, they're doing realism. She's not muttering to herself like, I can't believe I almost hit that deer. Now I have to walk to the house I'm renting. Yes. We don't know. We're just following her for a while. She's walking. I'm like, what is she going? Is this just a random house? But it turns out it is a house that she's renting out to someone. Well, she picks a, up yeah. the phone. It's a dial phone. She calls someone, I guess, probably her husband or partner. It sounds like a partner we never see again. Yeah, we never, we definitely never do. <laughs> and she's like, and I thought they were selling the house tomorrow, but I guess they're just renting it. And she's like, I got to spend the night here and blah, blah, blah. Well, I figured it out, George. It, it, yeah? the, the guys said they rented a house. And I was like, yeah, that's the house they're renting. Yes. Yeah, the, I mean, it's clearly the house. That, yeah, but it, we didn't realize it at this point. I now did. this. I'm smart. This, I did. Tim, I have to tell you a, a true life story of amazingness. <laughs> oh, no. So when she walks up to this house, there is a shot where we, we're walking with her outside and then we cut to the inside of this house and mm-hmm. she's opening the door. We hear she's got a key, so she gets in. So I'm like, oh, she must live here. But basically the entire frame of the film at this point is just a shot of the front door with prominently placed mid-frame a coat rack. Okay. Now this is not a very distinctive coat rack, really. You wouldn't look at the coat rack and be, ye gods, look at that coat rack. However... Mm-hmm. Earlier that night, maybe an hour beforehand, me watching this movie, my wife, on the way back from her Pilates class, walks into the house carrying a coat rack. Nice. As and... she had been walking home, there had been a woman putting out the coat rack at the curb, and she's like, oh, can I take this coat rack? The woman was like, it's all yours. Tim, this was the exact, exact same. same coat rack. Ooh. I ran up, I stopped the film. 
I ran and got my Wi-Fi. We pointed out. It even had an indent in the same spot. It was the exact same fucking coat rack. That is weird. That is weird, right? it's not haunted. I hope it's not haunted. I hope there's not going to be boogans. <laughs> Because once we get to the boogans, you're going to be like, you don't want boogans around. So um, the Max von Sydow guy we saw pull up, I thought that it was to her house, but I guess it's to the mine. He's, um, yeah. Yeah. He's peeking in the windows. And I know, by at, the way. He was at the house. You're right. He was peeking. I know right away. He, he, was, he was back in the mine, seeing them go in the mine. He's like, yep. oh, he said that. Yeah. You know right away he knows something's wrong. And he's just peeking at people. He's peeking at the girl in the house. <laughs> she hears something in the basement. And, well, she uh, goes down the basement to write um, to light an oil burner first, yeah. and it's a spooky basement. Because she says uh, she does have to get ready for the people. Yeah, and she hears something. We get like we get like what I call the boogans eye view, even yes. though we haven't seen the boogans yet. It's like if you've ever seen uh, Evil Dead Two, where the evil force comes zooming. It's like yeah. that, but much lower to the ground and not nearly as fast. It doesn't make a cool noise. It's just nope. we're getting a boogans eye view of something, whatever a boogans is. Yeah. Um. She grabs a big old knife and she's walking across the floor to check out what this is. And then something grabs her by the foot. We don't see what and just kind of yeah. drags her across the floor. And she, like I a mean, tentacle. yeah, well, we don't see the tentacle yet. Oh, we just okay. see the, it's later. We just see that something grabs her and she's being dragged off and she's just going, oh, oh, oh. like yes. <laughs> not really reacting with the le- if something's dragging me across the floor, I'm freaking out. Yeah. I'm not just going, oh, oh, and she gets dragged into the basement. And that's the end of her. Yeah, so far as we know, Tim. So far as we know, sorry. So far as we know, yeah. Then um, we switch to the girls and their BMW. No, their we don't car. yet. What? There's two, there's two more scenes first. All right. First, we see a cop's <laughs> pulling this lady's car out of the ditch and figuring oh, out right. that she's missing. Yeah. And then we go back to the mine where they go past where they blew open the mine yesterday. Mm-hmm. And they have a map, the four miners, oh, the two bosses oh, wow. and the two young guys. And they're like... There's three tunnels where there's only supposed to be two. Yeah, and they like, go to the one tunnel and they find a cave in and they start moving the rocks. Then we go to the ladies. Tim. Okay. Right. Yeah, their name is uh, Trisha and Jessica, right? Did I write that down? Or, uh, right? Trish and Jessica, yes. Trish, Trish, and Jessica. Trish, Trish does not wear a je- uh, cowboy hat. Jessica does. Yeah, Jessica's the one that wants to sleep with Roger. She's Roger's girlfriend, I guess. Yeah, she is the girlfriend that um, Jessica is the one that he hadn't fucked for what, was it, seven days and six hours, twelve hours, twelve. And uh, and pump. Trish is the one who we saw both the boobs of in the hot tub. Jessica's like, you know, Roger, he has names for body parts, and she says something <laughs> quietly. I'm no, you know, yeah. it's a penis. They they, yeah. they seem to smudge it out, even though they swear in this movie. I don't know, but oh. uh, did you hear it? I did, but I, I didn't write because I was going to write a list here and I didn't. Well, well, I wrote a list. Okay, I'm glad I didn't. All right. Other parts of bodies, of, of body parts of Roger? No, the, uh, the <clears throat> names that Roger has for different body parts, because he names them, right? That's what I meant, yeah. yeah. Uh, really Teeth? quickly, also, we were what? introduced to Tiger, their dumb dog, Nate and their, their car's dog. name is Molly. That never comes up again, though. <laughs> their, do- their car's name is Molly? Yeah, when they're talking about the names of like, uh, well, that's how it comes up. They're like, why'd you name your car Molly? Ah. You know, Roger names his body parts. I totally missed that. He named that. his dick Richard. <laughs> All right. Well, he calls his teeth crunchers. Crunchers. Okay. His, he calls arms flesh extenders. Flesh extenders. Ooh, that sounds dirty. Nose. He calls a nose a, a fart sniffer. Fart sniffer. Okay. I mean. Calls his finger an eye poker. Mm-hmm. All right. And oddly enough, he calls his penis eye poker. So that's, just, <laughs> that's what I got. That must lead to a lot of confusion. <laughs> yeah. That's why he's not allowed at children's birthday parties anymore. That's right. Yeah. Um, I want to mention anyway. So this scene ultimately was kind of pointless. I guess it existed to introduce the characters because they stop at the side of the road. Tiger, the dog runs off because he's got a pee. The George t- dog's got a pee. Yeah, but he like he's they're looking for him. Yeah. And they come back that. and they they find him back on top of the car and then they just leave. Yeah. Uh, yeah oh, it's pointless. Pointless scene. Well, I think it's to show us how much they hate this dog. They're just like, Tiger, come on. Oh, it's I also, mean, we think the dog's going to get eaten, but the dog's back in the car. I think we thought. I guess they did play it from the idea, like, if you go to this movie, you you probably know that this is a movie called Boogans. You're expecting something bad to happen. So maybe, I don't know. Like like yeah. I said, Tiger is a complete liability. Tiger brings, I mean, <laughs> he was a gr- the actor playing Tiger was one of the best canine actors I've ever seen. He's a poodle. The character a- of Tiger. No, he's a beach on freeze. Bichon Freeze? I don't know. I think he so. looks poodleish. Yeah, he's got like he's like got fluffy white curly hair. Very Utah rugged dog. No, he's not rugged at <laughs> he's, all. I know. 
complete menace. <laughs> All he does in this movie is run away, hide, and rip up furniture <laughs> and clothing. And everyone, everyone hates him. And yeah, I mean, well, that's not true. The, the girls love him, but they're annoyed by him. Now we're back in the mine, yeah. Because I see they find what, uh, a whole bunch well, of they, skulls. Well, first, they clear the rubble aside. They find what is an actually pretty impressive set. It's a complete underwater pool. It's very much like a Star Trek set underground, George. Oh, no, Star Trek doesn't look that good. <laughs> it it's a pool of water underground, and they're like, wow, this is amazing. And you do see, did you catch him? You see what is a boogin's head swimming under, just under the surface of water for a second. Yeah, just for a second. But you don't, not enough to get a clear glimpse, but because I'm like, I'm like, at this point, I'm thirsting for the boogin. So I'm froze like, it? No, I didn't freeze it. I'm just like, that was a boogin's. Because I, uh, I have spoilers, Tim. Okay. I went and searched to see what a boogin looks like online before oh, watching yeah. the movie. No, oh, okay, you did too. All right. But they find a bunch of skulls, which Roger calls brain squeezers. That's what he calls bones. <laughs> skulls. Well, yeah, first they find this one skull, then they find like a huge disarticulated pile of bones. Yep. And they're like, shit, that must have been the other miners. Roger calls those calcium sticks. People's bones. Calcium sticks? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't call them human Legos? <laughs> nope. Yeah. No? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. 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 Depends. And the rest of the movie, we should mention, Roger just spends his time trying to put all the people back together again because yes. he was very influenced by Humpty Dumpty as a child. Really? Yeah. And then it doesn't Why? work out. They bring I in the horse because he was he <laughs> he really liked eggs. Just like uh, just like uh, who? a character. I can't remember the name of in a Waters <laughs> movie. What was her name? Divine. Divine. She liked eggs. <clears throat> I thought she liked dog poop. I know. Dog poop. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Poodle dog poop. That was a poodle, too. Yep. Connections. All right. Now we go back to the women driving through in Molly, the Volkswagen Beetle. They drive into Silver City. And at this point, I finally realized, like, oh, these are the girls. Mm -hmm. And I I finally put together how it's all connected, like all our disparate characters. The lady who gets dragged into the basement, who owns the house. These girls, the girl, Jessica, is fucking Roger. It's upsetting. And the other two are going to be, they're trying to hook him up. Yep. Uh, We see the coat rack again. I was very excited. Jessica's like, I haven't touched Roger's eye poker in 12 days. Yeah, she does that. And I would appreciate it that they did move it up slightly because it's been a half a day. <laughs> oh, they did keep track. I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. You're keeping track of this? Every movie and we then, see, that's why I, you say it's a good movie, but uh, I'm just saying I enjoyed how terrible these characters, these characters, I don't like these characters. They're, they're like teenagers. Like, you know, like every Tim, movie we see from the 80s are just like teenagers. Aren't well, they? I did read I did read a review of this movie where they they pointed out and it's actually it's kind of astute that this month this is not a slasher film, mm-hmm. but it does follow a lot of slasher film it stuff. Does. Like if you take out the boogans and put in like a guy wearing a hockey mask or like yeah. maybe a Star Trek actor mask, <laughs> maybe like a Sulu or a Zephram Cochran. Yeah. Or uh, give me something even more obscure. A, a um, uh, Orion. That guy Mud. An Orion. That guy Mud. Yeah. Mud. How about Apollo from that one episode? Outrageous where, O'Connor. Who cries for Adonis? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, you'd like you like the one where the giant hand of Zeus holds the Enterprise. You ever see that one? It's Apollo. Yeah. Apollo. Of course I do. Sorry, Apollo. Yeah. You're embarrassing yourself, Tim. So they're they're in the house and 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 Jessica's all like I'm gonna fuck Roger, yeah I'm gonna put on a you know whatever yeah and then Trish is like well I'm gonna take a shower and she goes the water's all cold yeah and then like seriously dramatic music starts playing and Jessica's <laughs> like well wa- usually water heaters are in the basement right dun 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 <laughs> damn water heater. <sighs> And so this grossed me out because she walks into this unfurnished, unfinished basement. It's like oh, dirty, and bare and feet, stuff. right? Bare feet. She's yeah. going to get this movie. After this movie ends, this isn't my revenge sequel. After <laughs> this movie ends, she has to amputate both her legs because of all the ringworm she gets from this scene. That's your sequel. And there's all this suspense and stuff. And like, and you see like you're getting the boogans eye view and stuff. But then it's just fucking Tiger because Tiger is a complete menace <laughs> liability. Hiding in boxes. <laughs> yeah, he's hiding in the boxes. <laughs> But after they both go upstairs, we do get a couple seconds that Boogans Eye View, don't we, Tim? Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. And uh, you know what's doubly gross, I realize, about her feet on the floor? Because I wrote this down. The next time we see Roger, Roger's go- Roger says, I can't wait to take Trisha's clothes off. First, I'm going to rip her No, it's pants Jessica's off. clothes. Jessica's it's clothes, Jessica. and I'm going to lick her toes. But it's Trish who went into the basement. <laughs> oh, Never mind. Cut yeah. it out. Yeah. Cut no, it it's out. All, no, it's all good. Because, yeah, because Roger good. is like, he, 
Roger's talking to what's his name, Mark? He's like, Mark. First, I'm going to take off all her clothes, then a liquor from the toes up. And Mark's like, ew, gross. <laughs> but then the bosses come yeah. and they're like, bad news, Roger. <clears throat> You got to go into town and get new maps for the mine because we found three tunnels. This doesn't make sense. And he's like, but I'm about to have sex with my girlfriend. And they're like, yeah, whatever, buddy. <laughs> and then as they leave, he's doing this whole bit where he goes, how dare you question the virility of Hormone Man? Oh, I hated that bit. I almost did a list here of stupid superhero names. I'm like, too easy. And I left that fruit on the tree. Yes. I just hated that bit. So I was like, no. Yeah, it was awful. They were, yeah, Tim, I'm kind of siding with you. Like, okay, <laughs> I... I don't like Roger. Roger is the Barney Rubble, yes. Dana Carvey guy, in like, case you're listening. Roger sucked. I end up liking Mark. Mm-hmm. I end up liking Trish. And I like Jessica. I think the problem is Roger. Yes, Roger's whole problem. I also like the two bosses. I like every character in this movie. The two bosses except are for totally Roger. reasonable people. I thought they were going to be assholes for the yeah, sake of yeah, this Yeah, they're actually kind of cool. Like, that, like normally in this movie, if you have two older guys who are like the bosses, you expect <laughs> them to be like, and like they even send that quote unquote hero away to have to do this. I'm like, no, yeah. they're fun. And he, um, because of the start, he just says only one rule in the mind. No fucking around. That's about it. You're <laughs> right. That is, yeah. The second rule. Says, we don't talk rules, about mine. We don't talk about Club. mines. Yeah. <laughs> or mind club. <laughs> All right. And uh, then we, they drive away again and we see Max von Sydow watching again. You really <laughs> and then of... we cut, we, we, we cut to the cowgirls, like a cowgirl, Jessica screaming like in terror, but we zoom out and it's just Rogers tickling her. So they've been, yep. and, and it Poking sounds with really his, alarming his eye poker. with his eye poker, yes. which, <laughs> which folks see? at home, which eye poker is it? <laughs> I'll leave it up to you because you know what? Then we do see Trish runs in from the shower. She got the hot water working and she's all talking like, are you OK? And guess what, Tim? We, we, she, she's OK. She's having sex. Yeah. And, well, she's not. She's getting tickled first. Oh, tickled. First. But, we, but we do see Trish's butt. Yeah. When Mark walks in, Mark from behind. He well, sees we see her, her butt, butt first. She's walking, and then Mark walks in. He's like, he's like, I see your butt. Yes. And she turns around and then she shows her butt to like the guys in the bedroom. Right. So she, everybody sees her butt. And everyone's <laughs> like, ah, we saw your butt. And she runs out of the movie. And that's the end. You know what Roger calls butts? Um, let me guess. Chair moisteners. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Mark and, and, and Trish meet each other and have a beer. Yeah. And they he, have a, and it's, yeah. yeah. But he charms her by saying, you know, I made a, because they're, they hate the dog. He said, you know, yeah. I made a mini electric chair for dogs. I, I like that. <laughs> Does that make any sense to you? <laughs> what kind of icebreaker is that? It was, they were doing like, yeah, they were sitting there. They, I wanted to mention they're drinking cores just because right. like it's a time period. They're drinking cores. We learned a little bit about them. Um, yeah, they, they both hate Tiger, who wanders <laughs> into the basement during this point. Right. Um, uh, we learned Trish is a writer for the Denver Post, which was True. our first clue that this is not taking place in Utah, but actually Colorado. He was like some sort of... Um, he made tiny chairs. He made a tiny electric chair for he a made, mouse. Yeah, he's some sort of pet executioner. Yes. Yeah. He calls it his squeaky sizzler. <laughs> What's the it's one terrible. for cats called? I did one for pigs. It's called Bacon Burger. Oh. Uh, the cats is called... Uh, oh, he has man. one for... How, he has one how, for ba- how crude do you want us to be? <laughs> Go crude, Tim. Go crude. <laughs> uh, pussy warmer. I don't know. Gross, Gross Tim. Gross. Ew. That's <laughs> terrible. He does one for Mormons and it's called the Mormonator. Oh, I don't wow. know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the police come looking for uh, the missing woman that was there. She never been seen again. The woman who we saw in the opening scene, yeah. the woman who had all the bumper stickers. Yep. And they're being very serious. Like, look, we got to find out what happened. And meanwhile, as this is going on, we know that Jessica and Roger are doing the Rim Ram Jim Jam in the bedroom. Yep. So they have to, unfortunately for Mark, he has to knock on the door. And Roger's like, go away. I'm having sex. Right. And he's like, you really got to come with the cops are here. So the, the, the cop. Ca- uh, yeah. The cabin's the shaking. The ca- <laughs> oh, this if this knocking. cabin's shaking, don't come a, a quaking. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, if this cabin's rocking. Sorry. Wow. If this cabin's rocking, don't come a shaking. <sighs> Tim. <laughs> Guys, I don't want to alarm you, but like Tim, after that exasperated sigh, he just drank just what drank. looks like three thirds of a bottle <laughs> right. of I did. old turkey. Yeah, old turkey. Just held up and guzzled it. All right. <clears throat> so the cops leave after explaining. They're like, oh, we don't, we've had no contact with her. And uh, they go mm-hmm. into town to have dinner. 
Oh, but first, I just again, the dog ran out the door when the policeman came. And he's like, oh, I'll get him. And they're like, eh, who cares? <laughs> That's basically what they said. <laughs> this is true. It's, I have, it's Tim, snowing I have, out. It's winter. I have, I have so many notes where it's like the like Tiger runs out and does this. Something. I'm like, I don't even know why. Because I, I was always expecting something to happen. That, yeah, Tiger is always just running <laughs> off. And this is funny. They go out for dinner. We do see, again, Max von Sydow is around snooping. But I guess right. now he's really at the mine because this comes in later. I don't know. He gets around. He has no car or bike. That's a good point, Tim. Gets around. I think he teleports. <laughs> but then the second they leave, Tiger runs and grabs one of her shoes and sits right. in the bed and starts ripping them apart. <laughs> like, Tiger is a straight-up menace. He is. <laughs> I thought they were underwear. Well, she grabs the underwear, too, eventually. Like, like Tiger mm. really just <laughs> – Tiger – Tiger's bad. He tore up a 1982 issue of Playboy. That's why I don't oh, know. Oh, no. Who was on that one? I don't know. He tore it up. Oh, let's piece it together, Tim. Yeah. Hold on. We're oh, going to wow. pause. Him. Okay. All right. I got it. <laughs> I see that. I see some of the names. Really? It's Beverly Bloomers. <laughs> That's not 1981 Beverly, name, George. Bev- That's 18, you know, 1891. Well, it was in the special gals of the centennial issue. <laughs> of old Utah. Of old Utah, yeah. <laughs> and her likes are oddly constricting underwear and her 17 sister wives. And her <laughs> dislikes are when um, a f- a the latter days. Oh, yeah, that, go, that one go, sister wife. Dislike. That one sister wife. She won't name. She knows who I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. Yep. That was good. That was good. Uh, we do get a but we do get a book inside view as Tiger destroys everything in the house. Right. But then uh, they meet the bosses at the bar again, showing that the bosses are kind of cool guys. They're, they're just cool. hanging out. Yeah. And so He's they're the like, jerk. he says, here's my girlfriend, Pennsylvania sexy. Yeah, I didn't get that. I don't get it. He's just a jerk. And didn't they know that you, Tim Hamilton, were going to watch this movie in the future? <laughs> and that you have a weird anti Pennsylvania bent that I just kind of. I hate you do, Pennsylvania. You, know, you hate Pennsylvania. Too many letters. Stands for. Too many letters. Too many letters. It, yep. it, you confuse with Transylvania, which yep. is full of confuse vampires. It. You don't like that it contains the word pencil, but it isn't spelled correctly. It's not. No. Um, yeah. Yeah. I didn't understand the pencil. I guess it was like a Minnesota he, Fats reference. He used to call her Baltimore pool. sexy, but then he found out she's from Pennsylvania. So he had to he think found up. She's an Oriole. Yes. Oh. He had to think okay. up a new nickname. <laughs> <laughs> took him a while, but. Yeah. So the deal is, which took me a while to figure this out. Roger has to go get the maps at like headquarters. He's going to borrow <laughs> one of the boss's cars. So he has to leave a little bit early to go home and sleep a little bit. Cause it's been all night drive. Yep. Yep. But so they do shoot pool for a little bit. He leaves, goes home to sleep. Roger she tempts him with sex. He's like, Oh, I won't get no sleep if you come home with me. And she's like, well, don't worry. I'm going to stay here and be a pool shark and steal money <laughs> and like just humiliate your bosses and pool, which she proceeds to do, which means yes. it was pretty. And they were good natured about it. Again, yeah. this movie, very odd that these old like if I had to hang out with somebody in this movie, I'd hang out the two old guys. Yes. See, I'd be like, yeah, they sat down, got the paper. You would hang out with Max. They were, they they were like, reading uh, Boner's Ark and they were laughing it up. There you go. In the newspaper you know, Tim, comic strip. The comic strip Boner's Ark. Boner's Ark. And, uh, yep. Their favorite characters are Duke the Penguin and Priscilla the <laughs> Bikini Wearing Pig. Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Lost everyone. So Roger comes home and he finds that the place is trash. Now, we did see there was a scene where the Boogans I view was <clears> chasing <throat> Tiger around the house. We're assuming mm-hmm. we see Tiger hide behind the garbage and the garbage gets knocked over. We yes. see Tiger go inside a cabinet and the cabinet gets like, so we're like, oh, poor Tiger got killed. Mm-hmm. But like there's all but there's also I mean, Tiger did do some of the wrecking. There's like shredded clothes over the bed. <laughs> shredded underwear. And he's like, yeah, he's like, he's like, God damn it, Tiger. If you don't come out, I'm going to murder you. Bubbity boo. Got my tiny electric chair all ready for you. All right. Well, that's Mark's <laughs> tiny electric chair because Mark is the pet executioner. <laughs> oh, I'm right. just the guy that looks like Dana Carvey. But I I'm bought, supposed to try. Yeah, I bought his he's, pet ex- executioner chair. <laughs> he sets the alarm because he goes to bed. I guess the pool, the bed collapses. Yeah, it's broken because they yeah, jumped broken. down too much. I think that's the joke. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, damn. While this is happening, I should mention Trish and Mark are flirting at the bar. And I'm like, oh, that's right. They have, they, have some, well. they have some just weird, boring dialogue. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, it was boring lips. enough I didn't write. Yeah. He's like, how? Uh, and he, he comes to the idea, like, how are you going to seduce me? He's like, what about a quiet night by the fire? She's like, all right. <laughs> so how about if I come to the library years from now and you don't remember me. And I go, Mary, Mary, it's me. Yeah. What is that a reference to? <laughs> it's a wonderful life. Oh, <laughs> oh, Mary, not Mary. Mary. When I you said, said Mary. Mary. 
I thought you said Mary, so I was thinking it was like Lord of the Rings. It's me, Mary. Oh, Mr. Gower. And she screams and runs away. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway. And then Alfalfa opens the pool and they all fall in. (laughs) Yes. Just throwing out random scenes. (laughs) What if I just come to your house and Rick stand and you're blowing that laundry that's drying with all the autumn leaves and I just stare up at your window and I got a mask on. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, now I'm Michael Myers. Yeah, now I do. All right. You were sweating it till I got to the mask. I was, I was like, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, I thought you were gonna maybe do uh, the John Cusack movie. Like, oh, right. In your eyes. hey, let's talk about this movie. So Trish and Mark decide they're gonna head home, and then we go home, and Roger hears something in the basement again. But no, he uh, hears it in the garage. He goes out to the garage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And something pulls him under the car. Like grabs his leg. We don't see what, and he's pulled in, and he's like pulling his way out. He again is he, not scared enough. If I go no. in the garage and something he's, grabs me and pulls me under a car, I'm shreking. I'm like he almost he admittedly shit his pants earlier in the movie. Yeah, he did. He said, the "Did for- you smell that?" Yeah, the shit would <laughs> shoot out of me so hard it would actually blow me across <laughs> this the the garage, and I'd be escaped. He does get away, but his legs all fucked up. And he's kind of looking around and then something hits him so hard. He goes through a cabinet yep. and then another, we see this like sharp thing. limb with like a sharp claw on it. It cuts his throat and drags him into the car. I'm like, Oh, Roger says, no, not my food tunnel. <clears throat> That's what he called his throat. He said, no, <laughs> his last words. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, not my food tunnel. It's his last no, words. I use, I use that to <laughs> swallow stuff. I make new cells with. <laughs> So they come um, home, um, um, Mark and Trisha, and they just have Mark sex. Mark and Trisha. Yeah. Well, first, there's the great bit of dialogue. He's like, God. I, no, she goes, God, I like your eyes. He goes, my name's Mark. God's this big guy with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> I, to, I miss that. <laughs> oh, man. Tim, that was such a you joke. I could picture <laughs> totally you when you were. It. I could picture you seducing Miss producer Miss Lee for the first time, and she's be like, God, I like your toes. You're like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I totally missed it. I would have loved that. I must yeah. have looked away. Oh, yeah. If Blasto was listening, you should watch this movie. It's full nudity. Saw everything. Everything. I saw the, uh, bo- the boobs, which Roger, you see, you see, used, Roger called them nipple tables. Nipple tables. <laughs> That's what Roger called that. He was dead Tim, at this point. but Yeah, we don't, we don't see everything, though. I'm telling Blasto that. Oh, okay. Oh, Cabl- yeah, Blasto. We see everything. <laughs> yes. Everything. Um, yeah, so they're, uh, they're fucking in front of the fireplace on the floor. <laughs> we get the Boogan's Eye view. And I don't know, again, if this is supposed to be the Boogan's Eye view or tiger. once again, if it's Tiger, because suddenly they, they flip over the table and Tiger runs out. And they're That's like, right. Tiger. <laughs> and it's not the first time this movie has made us think that we're seeing a Boogan's <laughs> when it's Tiger. Yep. Yep. So then we cut to the morning Mine. and we see an artfully naked Trish laying in bed. She's laying there like oh, we yeah. see like a lot of side boob, a little bit of butt, all <laughs> kinds of all kinds of stuff. Tim, I know you you kept freezing frame on this one, yep, right? I freeze yep. frame the whole thing. Yep. Looked and then up. in the morning, uh, Mark, he Mark gives her a kiss in the head because he's got to go to the mines and, and he sees mi- Jessica. Uh, oh, yeah. Because Jessica thought, of course, that, you know, Roger had left to go yeah. get the map. And she's like, did you see Tiger? He's like, I almost had a menage a trois with Tiger last night, which right. it was upsetting. Don't have that line of dialogue in there. No. Because now we're a picture of him fucking a dog. <laughs> so, so they, oh, Jess, the Jessica or, March. Oh. Well, Jessica March searched for Tiger. And you're I'm thinking lost. now is Tiger dead finally at this point? No. no. The Tiger's again hiding. But they did find a secret tunnel in the basement. Oh, that's and he's right. looking. He's like, huh. Tiger and then just... Tiger runs out. <clears throat> tiger drags home a dead deer like, tiger <laughs> <laughs> so they go to the mine and at the mine is what tim well instead of this old man being sensible he, he hammers little <laughs> crosses into the grounds what's what Three they crosses. Say? i forget what they say they say he just uh, he writes in red paint over the entrance he nails over the entrance he writes danger death death, death. and at, at the crosses i don't they might have said something tim this is oh. a chance for improv yes and uh, yes and uh i missed it <laughs> It said Jesus it said died Jesus died for your sins. <laughs> but he spelt sins wrong. Oh, he spelled so S Y N? Yeah. And it was like your your sin is the uh, synonyms. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and it said accept Jesus. <clears throat> or And he said W W J D, but it stood for what would J Lopez do? This sucks. Cut all this out. <laughs> this is the worst we've ever but done. Old men making signs. 
But you remind uh, me of something. Oh, what? Old men making signs. I'll make this really quick. This episode's okay. long. It's, it's a good episode. <sighs> there was a long ago in the park where we walk our dogs in with totally different dogs. There was a man who had a very friendly dog. We loved his dog. His dog would come say hi to you and everything. But this guy this sounds was, like a fairy tale. Yeah, but this guy, his owner, was just a, uh, a piece of shit. He's one of those guys. He would he would take he would tell these off color jokes, and if women uh-huh. are around, they'd be like, "What?" And he go and he would say, "Oh, don't like my jokes, huh? I guess it's, you must be on the rag. It must be that time of the month you don't like my jokes." Jesus Christ! That was his response when people didn't want to laugh at his like awful jokes that were sexist and everything. So one he day, sounds like a Roger if Roger hadn't been killed. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So later on, my wife comes home. She goes. She says, "I was in in Times Square today. I saw the guy who owns that dog." You know what he does all day? Carries He's around a sign painted no. that says, "Except Jesus or burn in hell." He's, he had one. He was like, you know, those signs oh. that were very uh, aggressive. Then he had a little sign that said, uh, "Don't accept Jesus. Guess you must be on the rag. Must be that time of the month, huh?" <laughs> that part's imagine fake. Think, ima- <laughs> imagine that guy thought he was doing the work of like the good, like the good Christian work. <laughs> Belittling women by saying, "Like what a what a jerk!" I, know. I hope I hope I hope when he died, it was peacefully yeah. in his sleep. But I hope his dogs ate him. Yeah, I haven't seen him in a long time, so he could be dead or moved. His away. dogs ate him. His dogs ate him. I hope his dog ate him. His dog was very nice. Yeah, I hope his dog got a good meal out of it. So, I hope his dog ate him and hollowed out his skin <laughs> and then moved in his skin and now lives as a human somewhere. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That so works. yeah, the old man did do the stupidest way of warning them by writing death and stuff. <laughs> And they're like looking at this, like, why? What? Who would do this? And they're like, I mean, like, they could have run off the generator. <laughs> right. They're like, it was 500 or 600 bucks right there. And then they say, more like a thousand. Tim, start the music. Oh, there's your music. George's, George's cur- cur- currency curter. Tim, what was $500 the equivalent oh. to? 1981. What is the spending power of $500 equivalent to now? <sighs> Probably a thousand. A little bit, well, a bit over. Mm. More like one thousand seven hundred forty-three dollars and thirty-three cents. Oh, close. So I'm since close. they said five hundred to six hundred bucks, Tim, what is six hundred bucks equivalent <laughs> to now? A twelve hundred. More like well, that's less than the one I just said. <laughs> You it say math. To remind you, it was $1,734.33, <laughs> the equivalent of $500. So $600 is worth <laughs> about, George, when you do math... It's with me this on this show. About, this is counting. <laughs> you know those scenes in The Simpsons where someone's talking to you, Homer, and there's and a like circus. Monkey. There's yeah, a circus a little... in his head. That's yeah. what happens to me when you do math. I think it's just the Zapruder <laughs> film plays over and over again. <laughs> yes. Back and to the left. With clowns. Back and to the left. <laughs> All right. So uh, $600 is the equivalent of $2,081.19. Oh, okay. That makes but sense. But they said the final thing was more like 1000 Tim, what is $1,000? <laughs> Back in 191 that. equivalent to that. No, I did six hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars. Uh, if you could remember the first one, you could double it. Three hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. A thousand dollars in nineteen eighty one is the equivalent of three thousand four hundred and sixty eight dollars and sixty six cents. This has been your installment of George's current <laughs> currency kerner slash Tim has no math ability whatsoever. All That's right. what I meant. Three thousand. <clears throat> so Trisha's a reporter. She goes, I don't know where yep. we are. She goes yeah, to Yeah, we're the, about here to the newspaper office. Yeah. And there's an old lady and she's like, I found this old story about the first female paper boy. And, and I was like, what is going on? Well, no, Did she created, she, she hired the first female paper boy. She worked for the Denver uh, post back in the day. Turns she, out, which I don't know if this had been said before and we missed it. The reason why Trish is in town is she's writing an article yeah. about the cave in that we saw in the beginning. Oh. So she's at the newspaper researching old stories. The newspaper is one old lady. She's like, I remember when Mark Twain came by. I honestly feel like she was like just a real old lady that they couldn't get to leave. So they just put her in the scenes. <laughs> so Tim, are you going to do this next scene as Mark Twain? No, just saying no. she found some old comics, you know, Tr- uh, Tr- Trisha it? did. She thought Tr- the comic was, it- was called Penis, George, but. The old lady well, office. We've, we've said, done this joke before. <laughs> the paper's just smudged. It's called Peanuts. Yeah. Now it's the first time I did that joke. <laughs> no, definitely not. For all the new listeners. <laughs> yeah, we have no new <laughs> listeners, Tim. It's a steady decline. <laughs> um, so she. Where I want to mention here? this though. She leaves Jessica home alone while she goes oh, to this. That's right. And we also at the mine we see Max von Sydow stealing some dynamite. That's important. Oh yeah. Um. Mark realizes something that he should have mentioned earlier, and I'm glad they brought this up. He hmm. mentions to the boss, he goes, 
you know what's pretty weird? And the boss is like, what's pretty weird, Mark? He goes, well, we found all those bones in a big pile right. just articulate, right? And the boss is like, we sure did, Mark. He's like, you know, you figure if they died from like starvation or thirst or even exposure to gas, the skeletons would still be kind of where they laid. Like, who took those bones apart? They're like, hmm. And the boss goes, we really need those maps. Yeah, that's then, one thing about this movie. When you come across the mass grave, don't you call somebody? Like the Smithsonian yeah, well, they, <laughs> or somebody? No, they didn't because they're like, the Smithsonian yeah. will take this and hide it. They're like, mass grave. Uh, Jessica takes back home at, at their house. Jessica takes Tiger, the liability, out for a walk. Tiger, she sees weird trail. She sees one set of tire marks going into the garage. She's like, hmm. Yes. She opens up the garage, and what does she discover? The car is still there. The truck. car is still there, which the truck. The truck. Which means Dodge. Roger never left. Yep. So she she calls the newspaper where Trish is researching with the old lady who keeps talking about the olden days. <laughs> we do hear a little bit that there was only one survivor of the cave-in. His name was Harold Griswold. Oh. And the lady's like, there's all these misspellings. This. Back in the day, those boneheads spelled words all different kinds of ways. They didn't know apparently this, body part names even. Yeah. They didn't even know body part names. <laughs> my my Reggie, he, call, he called his penis. Can you imagine? An eye Tim, poker? take it away. An eye poker. <laughs> she, oh, that's when she realized this, this lady was her mother. Yes. Yeah. There's your sequel. So Jessica calls Trash to, to tell Trash, Trish, like, I don't think Trash, to tell that <laughs> Roger never left. And then we see Trish go to the mine and she's like, is Roger here? And Mark's like, no, baby. <laughs> and so she's like, she tells him like, OK, so I have two things to tell you. One thing, a guy named Griswold survived and he talked about being attacked and they carried him up to the nut house and he died in the nut house. And two, Roger's missing. George. And then, yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a facility. It's not a nut house. They, I mean, they said they said not house Tim. Oh, I'm using yeah. oh you always use your excuse you're like dirty hookers you're gonna be a hard time the hookers. <laughs> oh Tim just you wait so now we cut back to the house it's been established that something attacked and we're finally getting the story and, the, and like and Mark's like we gotta Tell we her. gotta do something about this we go back Jessica's taking a shower now Jessica must have had a very different sort of contract than the actor who played Trish because we're Trish we saw her butt and we yeah. saw her boobs and we saw everything if Kevin Cablasto's listening <laughs> we don't quite see anything we no. he, we see the we see the bug-eyed the bugins eye view in the basement something roars a tiger and then there's like a vent that connects to the basement and we see like two little tentacle tips come over and just rips this thing bends metal yeah yeah and then and it takes tiger at, at this point, I said, like, you know, I got to say Tiger is like the best canine actor I've ever seen. This dog is carrying <laughs> half this movie. These tentacles grab Tiger and we hear. Arp! And Jessica's like, huh? She runs out in this towel. I know she never cared seeing... before. She did. She remembered the morning. She's like, where's Tiger? Okay. She she except like Tiger, like many pets, is beloved, but a complete liability. <laughs> and she sees like this bent out grate and like tufts of white fur. And she's like, huh? And then suddenly something reaches up and grabs her arm and pulls her down like yep. into the – she's too big to go in this hole. We see shots of a close-up of her face against the grate. I, this towel stays on. I know, till she dies. Like she, she is wrestling with this thing. <laughs> Tim, spoilers. We hear this weird roar again. She gets over. She throws a dress around the grate. Yep. The dresser gets thrown through the air. We see the bookends I view with somebody's chasing her. She's screaming. And then suddenly we see the same stuff that happened to Roger. She gets slashed. And we're like, oh. Yeah. And I thought she was going to be the main character. So, so at this I. point I was kind of surprised. Slashed her uh, food hole. Food slashed channel. her food hole. Uh, slashed her um, her jaw holder on her. Um, <laughs> this did it slash her, her jaw. Oh, it slashed her in the cheek. That's what I was trying oh, to say. Her, her brain yeah. mask. Just slashed her face. Her brain mask. Yeah. Oh, that's what it's called. Okay. <laughs> then then oh weirdly, where were you? <laughs> we cut. We cut back to the. We cut back to where the boss is, and he's like, There's "Something in the water." And they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, oh, I guess the boss is going to die now. Yep. But the boss doesn't die. He goes in the water and he he fills up, the, weirdly, the body of Roger. Yep. Roger is nicely mutilated. His face is all wormy looking. He looks like worm face from previous Eddie Bimco film. Brain mask. Um, um, what? Brain mask. His, his brain, brain mask. mask is all but yeah, just like mutilated. worm face. Yeah. Just like worm face from Squirm. <laughs> but he doesn't have worms yet. I actually feel like we should say that. <laughs> And suddenly See, the the Max von Sydow guy was there, and he's like, "Hey, that's the young lad that's been working for you, eh? Yep. Ain't I been warning you?" And all of a sudden, no, all you the haven't been warning. You've been sneaking no, you around. <laughs> you suck around. You you have fucking dynamite. We haven't used that yet, but you wrote <laughs> death. You know what could have worked? You could have walked up and said, "Hey guys, <clears throat> yeah, just so you know, because we learn he 
is the son mm-hmm. of the guy uh, Griswold, who was the only guy who survived. And he's like, yeah, I've been watching this for years. Nobody believed him, but there's monsters in these tunnels. He said in this cave. Mark Twain told me. Mark better, Twain told me. Better leave small clues and better speak the full truth. Yep. What, what else did Mark Twain tell him? That's all I told him. That's it? <laughs> yeah. But so he's the son of the, he only met him once. <laughs> then he ran away. <clears throat> but then they realized, so they're like, they're like, and they immediately, again, I always commend a movie when they immediately realize the seriousness. They did find this guy dead. Yeah. And Mark is like, but Roger was at the house. How did he get here? Mm-hmm. And now this is important for my story and for the whole movie. <laughs> okay. The Max Vine Sad Out looking motherfucker is like, these tunnels go all around town. Your house, your blasted, open them up. So there's tunnels. Every oh. single house in town Ooh. is connected via tunnels, all, right? All the way to Gotham City. All the way to Gotham City. I'm not <laughs> doing Gotham City, folks. And Mark's like, the girls. So he runs to help the girls. And uh, see, I, I mean, I enjoyed yeah. the movie up to here because I enjoyed these characters. But now they're all dead except for Mark and Trish. Well, they're not all dead. The, the, the one boss gets killed by a, a yeah, tentacle. But now they just run. This is also the titular line. The old man goes, Boogans. I know, he does say it. And he, it's the only time we get the word Boogans is. They ha, they, you know that was like recorded later. Like, this whole movie, you never say Boogans. He's like filming against a black background, just going, Boogans. I know. He, light, he lights dynamite, and then the tentacle grabs him from the water, and the dynamite explodes. And one of the bosses, who we never distinguished, you see him jump out of the way, but like there's a huge cave-in. Yep. Just like so, Star Trek. You know how many cave-ins like are in Star, Star Trek when they beam down to a tunnel planet? You seven know. and they're all yeah yeah seven they're all directed yeah. by There's, this guy and the trouble and they want trouble with tribbles yep yep uh the uh gonorrhea with gorns <laughs> devil in the dark <laughs> uh the spookiness with spock um <laughs> <laughs> there's something about uhura there's <laughs> something about uhura uh anyway. Su who sulu <laughs> yeah. um all right so then uh so mark's on the surface world he calls home nobody answers he calls <laughs> the sheriff yeah. And then um, Trish arrives at home. Not he didn't wasn't successful. She hears the shower. She finds blood and like the house is destroyed. We see sheriff cars ripping towards it. And then Trish goes into the basement with a pitchfork and a flashlight. Wait, the house is destroyed after they they fight with the boogans and it gets lit on fire. No, no, no. That's truly. But the house is like full of like you know smashed doors. Oh yeah, and I see what you mean. Yeah, the stuff yeah. that Tiger did. Yeah, it's not. That's fine, folks. Spoilers, they just run. It gets literally destroyed. They yeah. just run. Trish goes in the basement with like a pitchfork and a flashlight. She finds Jessica's body. This woman has been dragged down the basement, attacked. She's still wearing this towel. I know. It's, it's, Not that I want to see like no, a dead naked see, person, no. but I'm like, this towel is magic. This was a Bird Eye Gordon movie, or what's that? Like Weiss. If it, was, if it was a Weiss movie, we'd see bloody oh, dead naked well, bodies. So much. Jack Weiss. Jack we love Weiss. you, Jack Weiss. I hope you're listening. <laughs> Um, so, uh, then we, I think, is this what we finally, yeah, we finally see what a Boogans looks like. Yeah. Very terrible. Didn't like them. It's a puppet. No, it was a puppet. It had like a face that I've heard people saying it looked like a turtle spider. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. I mean, it's so it's got, you, you, I don't, at least in what I do, you never see its full body, but it does, it does have a weird, it's on the ground. It's got like a weird wrinkly body, which some people interpret as shells, but I thought it was just like a weird body. Yeah. See, I don't know if it has tentacles as much as it's it like has like weird spider. long legs. With, yeah. Like, and sometimes the legs have like one spike on it, but there's definitely a scene where it's got like a mouth on the end. Yeah. And there's definitely scenes where it looks like tentacles, so it's, it's a little a, unclear. It's got a Muppet mouth. It was like it's got a it's got a Muppet mouth. Kermit a lot of fangs, painted black yeah. with some felt fangs. <laughs> it's got little green felt uh, triangles <laughs> yes. around its neck, and it keeps going. Oh, piggy! Oh, piggy! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sings. It's not easy being brown. <laughs> it is brown. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's fighting <laughs> Jessica. She's trying to stab it. It's got her leg. I'm like, oh, I guess she gets – not Jessica. Jessica's already dead. Trish. Yeah. yeah Trish. And then Mark and the sheriff run in, and the sheriff just like shoots, shoots the fucking boogie right in the head. And then he looks I'm at like, it real close. Yeah. Well, I'm like, wow, that was easy to beat that bad guy. And he's looking at his face. And as I wrote in my notes, uh, the boogans does a chimp on the cop's face. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> just fucking bites his face with his big puppet hand. Boogans are okay until they reach sexual meter, uh, maturity. <laughs> and that's why the book is wearing a diaper in this yes. and a little t-shirt <laughs> yeah so um the yeah so then it's all craziness the it's cops going like, ah! and then the house like the, the heater goes up in flames um the, run, the stairs are the on tunnels. fire so they yeah. have the only way they can escape through the tunnel the house truly just blows the fuck up at this point i'm glad you like the movie more than me because when they killed it in the basement and the house is on fire i thought they just mm-hmm. gotta get out the window and we're done right but i was like oh no we gotta run down the tunnel <laughs> Gotta go to the tunnel, yeah. And fight another one, which they just drop a beam on it. I will say, 
Somebody pointed this out. We are told there's many boogans. Yeah. But the uh, the budgetary limits of this movie are such that you'd never see more than one boogan. <laughs> At a time. So they run down the tunnel and they run into uh, the boss, the one boss who's – oh, no. First, they, there's a, a cave-in and, like, one grabs Mark's leg. And, again, props to this movie because – Trish kind of was like, oh, we have to save Jessica. She's kind of losing. And I hate when the woman becomes like a, you know, emotional mess. But she she kills the next one by dropping like a concrete beam on its head. Yep. And then they run into the one boss who's living. He's like, there's a whole bunch of them after us. We need to get this blow <laughs> this place closed. Believe me, I've seen them. Yeah, there's, you there's won't see them. thousands, millions. <laughs> and then suddenly like um, a tentacle snakes down from above and grabs the boss around the neck and hangs him like a munchkin. That's as right. I wrote. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Just like a munchkin. Good one, and then we, Good yep. one. And you, you see in the background next to a standout of Ted Danson. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we get the, the boogans eye view. They run out of the mind. Uh, they that's trip it. right in front of <clears> it. <throat> and um, at some point, they got dynamite. They blow the entrance of the mind shut. And that's how it ends. The end with question mark. Yeah. <laughs> Just Although like all these movies. Yeah. So you know how this movie is like Star Wars? How is this movie like Star Wars? Sometimes I, just, I say that. If there is something, I don't have to say it. You said it every episode since you introduced <laughs> it, and uh, how is this like Star Wars? Remember when Mark tried to impress Trisha by telling her he built a tiny electric dog chair? Well, you may yes. not remember this. There's a little scene they cut from the original Star Wars when Luke was trying to press, <laughs> impress Le- Leia. He told her he made little tiny Jawa electric chairs. Oh, I thought it was for Womp Rats. <laughs> no. Because he'd, bulls- he'd bullseye them. Jawas. Why? He's like, yeah, they're little subhumans. I just electrocute them. And in the planned sequel, uh, Mark and Trisha end up being brother and sister. Mm. Yeah, they kind of set that up. There is that line <laughs> earlier when they said like we're in-laws almost. Yes. I'm like, yeah, they're just they're just uh so I like to to counter Tim's excessive and reckless <laughs> bringing up of Star Wars. I like to say how it's like 1987's fantasy masterpiece directed by Jim Henson, Labyrinth. Um there's a lot of ways this is like Labyrinth actually, you know. Muppets. It's got Muppets. Um it takes place uh in a sort of labyrinthine set of tunnels. David Bowie has that famous song, Sec- Philadelphia Sexy Girl. Yep. Um, yep. Um, it's just called Philadelphia that, Girl. Yeah. One of the Muppets in Labyrinth, you see uh, its butt. Right. Yep. So there, there. It's like it. All <laughs> right. We go. Should we do sequels? Wherever you are, wherever you're hiding, I'll find you. Revenge. One of us will die. Is, oh, is yours long? I didn't count the words. It's not too long. It's not long. All right, you go first. I just, sometimes yours get really long. It's like weird lists, and you just keep, and then you change all the characters' <laughs> names repeatedly, and there's no way anybody gets through it. And I feel like, why did I even write my list? Because nobody's listening anymore. I'm sorry. You can go first. <laughs> I can go first. I'll switch. All right. All right. <clears throat> hey, George, you go first. Read it. All right. Here's my sequel, Tim. Let's, well, there is some revenge in here. So uh, there is a key line that really isn't followed up on this. It's kind of amazing. I guess this is going to be your first sequel. And luckily, Tim. I'm writing a sequel right here. Okay. The Max von Sydow looking motherfucker, he makes the remark that there's secret tunnels that attach all the houses in town. Oh. We never really see any of that. Not only that, they blow up the one entrance, they blow up their house, so presumably that brings down that entrance, Mm -hmm. and they blow up the cave, but apparently there's still entrances to all the houses in town. So this is a movie that kind of follows some of the other people. Specifically, we'll focus on this one guy next door. He wasn't super close by, but there was a guy named Lewis. He was just okay. like Lou, we'll okay. say. Lou. He was like an electrician. He just had kind of a normal job. If you had, if you needed work done in town, he was the guy who did it. He's got he had ba- all the Playboys. He had a Playboy collection in the basement next to all his model trains. Tim, he's the dude <laughs> you would like hanging out. Yeah, he, he had he had a pretty good collection of like. What, what's your favorite sort of track grade? Uh, H O. H.O. track, and he, he, it was all metal, no plastic. Right, of course. He had Rolling Stock. Yeah, he had a pretty cool diorama. He spent a lot of time in his basement, <laughs> and Lou's down there one day, and, like, there is... He's always been aware of this tunnel, right? He's put, like, some stuff in front of it. He has his stack of Playboys in front of it. And while he's sitting there, he's making this diorama with some sheep and stuff, right? Wouldn't you know it? The 1979 copy of Hooters and Jugs just flutters off and lands on the floor. Okay. He picks it up. He looks. He's like, hey. Knew this. Yeah. The, uh, do you remember who was the centerfold in Hooters and Jugs that time? What month? It was, uh, it was the uh, August 1979. That was Electra Parsons. Electra Parsons, yeah. Mm-hmm. And her likes were um, her father because Electra, of course, in Greek mythology, had a weird ancestral relationship with her dad. Okay. And her dislikes are um, 
uh, assassins who could turn any weapon, okay. any thrown object into a weapon. <laughs> Daredevil <laughs> reference. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And he hears that kind of roaring noise, right? Yes. And so, roaring. I mean, just of to water? cut to the chase. No, like the, the so noise the that we heard, the boogans. So we get a boogans eye view as it bursts through. And like, it's just... It's just like yellowed newsprint and photos of nude women are everywhere. And he's in a <laughs> life or death struggle with his boogans. <laughs> but Lou is an electrician. You know, he actually is pretty smart about the way he's fighting. He's throwing like Dude. trains at him. He's throwing like model mountains at him. <laughs> and he finally like the boogans wraps one of its tentacles or mouths around him and right. it's biting him. It's And he's about to be dragged back in the tunnel. And he grabs like an electric wire the and he electrocutes the, it. The train. Fucking from yeah. the trains. Yes. And he, he incinerates the boogans. But mm. and the movie and closes it? where it's been that well, it seems like that's it. But you know, out all around town, he's listening on the radio. He's hearing of these other accounts going off. And he's like, "Do I help these people?" But he feels a weird thing go over them. We never really get to see what happens if you get bitten by a boogans, because okay. you did have a problem with how they came about. Like they're just creatures. No, yeah, yeah. turns out they're humans who have oh. been bitten by a strange disease that Ooh. slowly turns you into a boogan. Gotcha. And so. Lou, our electrician friend, he goes out and he starts wreaking havoc as a werebuggin. Oh, jeez. But he also has weird electric powers because of, like, the way he had been, you know, okay. got his powers. And this movie is called, Tim, you ready for it? I know. You Boogans 2, Electric <laughs> Boogan Lou. <laughs> <laughs> That's my story. Well, I'm glad I let you go first. <laughs> I think... Only a H uh, O scale train would have enough electricity to defeat that boogan, the boogan. Yeah, you know, that's I, I knew you'd have that. That's why I made him electrician. I figured okay. maybe he's he souped it up. He yeah, made a, it was did. a Japanese bullet train. It was going around really <laughs> fast. It went two hundred miles per hour. All right, my music. All right. Oh wait, I don't like no, this music. I'm, you're not changing music. it. <laughs> so Trish, Trish and Mark, they uh, moved to start Trish the dish and Mark the park. The, the drip. <laughs> they, they move. He's a nice guy. They move to, to Maycomb, Alabama. Where? Maycomb, Alabama. They, they, Maycomb? Yeah, Maycomb, Alabama. Cause That's they a place? Had a, they had a hard time in, uh, in Utah, and they wanted to relax. It's a quiet town. But they did read that there used to be a lot of cloning experiments in this place. It was all shut down mysteriously long ago. And Mark and Trish, they often sit on their porch, and they sip their lemonade in the warm summer nights. And next door, there are these neighbors in a rundown house who they keep to themselves. They don't come out much, but Mark and Trish and their daughter Scout hear odd mine digging sounds coming from the house, which concerns them. Hmm. And Scout and her friends make fun of people who live there and spread rumors that they're ghosts and monsters. I'm trying to figure out what you're making reference to, but I'm still stuck on Maycomb. How is it spelled? (laughs) M A Y C O M B. C O M B. Really? And the woman who lives in. The woman who lives huh. in this house next door to them, she's the uh-huh. daughter of the man who's in charge of the cloning program that used to be in this town. And one day, mm. that woman who lives next door, she comes out to take her garbage out, and Mark and Trish are sitting on their porch, sipping their lemonade in the hot sun, and f- fanning themselves. They say, hello, we are Mark and Trish, Trish, your new neighbors. And she says, howdy. And she keeps uh, smiling and keeps walking. But Mark asks her if, if they're digging a mine in, in their house, because they hear mine digging sounds. And she says, no, no mine. You misheard. We're making a mime, she says. And Mark mm. says, how do you make a mime? And, and she mm. says, what are you saying? Mimes are born and not made? The woman shouts back at Mark. Oh, and this Mark, sounds like a beware the clown sort of question. And Mark says, no, I, I just hear a lot of drilling. And she says, oh, drilling. No, we aren't drilling. We're killing. Killing, Mark asks her. She says, yes, killing time, playing Monopoly. Just me and my son. Oh, Just boy. me and my son. <laughs> and he says, oh, well, as long as you aren't digging a mine, Mark says. And as long as you're not, as long as you're just killing time and not, not killing mockingbirds, you're, you're, you're okay by me. And she says, oh, no. <laughs> no, we're not killing. Maybe you hear us billing. And, and Mark says, no, billing. Billing doesn't make much noise. <laughs> And she says, well, we make noise, Billin. We don't use an invoice. We use a very loud out voice, the woman says. Oh, my God. Well. <laughs> Why I just, is this telling you with kill? Why are you doing I, to kill a mockingbird dirty this way? <laughs> you know, we're doing a movie set in Utah. Why are we doing I, fucking Alabama? They moved away. Okay, well, but why? Well, right. lady, I hope your, your son is not digging a mine. We, we don't see him out and about much. 
And she says, well, he only digs a pony as he's a big Beatles fan, she says. But we, oh aren't, my God. we aren't digging or, or killing or cloning. We especially are not cloning, she continues. And he says, okay, I'll talk to you later. So Mark and Trish, they sit in their porch drinking their lemonade and fanning themselves in the, the heat Alabama sun. And Mark talks about his upcoming court cases because he became a lawyer. And, and he yells as, as, at his daughter's scout to stop, stop making fun of the neighbors. But that night, Mark and his house are attacked by silent tall men who look like Robert Duvall. Because that lady next door, she indeed had been cloning. She had cloned her son, Boo, Boo Radley. Good Lord. <laughs> In fact, it was many Boo Radleykins coming after Mark and Trisha and Scott. They wanted revenge oh. on Scout, Scout for not for saying that their house was haunted. And Mark and Trisha and Scout were in a fight for their lives, and, and they ran through through the mines, and it was a grand thriller of a movie, and they survived. And this sequel is called Boogans 2. <laughs> <laughs> Cloning Boogaloos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Boo Radlikins, though. Boo Radlikins. Wow. <laughs> I am glad it went first. Um <laughs> I felt like I was taking a long walk to a drink of water, but your whole boo, like I, when I realized you're like, Oh my God, he's doing a boo Radley. That's Dude. outrageous. That's not outrageous. Tim. <laughs> All right. So if you, uh, folks, if you made it through that episode, Hey, write to us. It said he, write to us. It said Bimco with an E at the end at gmail.com. Speaking of Tim, did we get an email? I just looked. We did not. We did not Kevin Cablasto still hasn't ri- written about uh, ch- Chud. Yeah, I he never will. And we shouldn't be waiting for one person who is actually an occasional co-host hey, to write his letters. Hey, I like this movie. I will watch it again. It we comes highly recommended. Scores of some sort, but they got to be. Yeah, uh, uh, we were doing the Jack Elam scores for a little bit. Let's that's say, just for let's Jack start. Elam. This old yeah. guy had had perfect eyes. He he did. I will say. We'll, we'll we need to come, we need to come with the proper like I recommend this movie with the understanding it's not oh, a great movie. We'll, we'll give it Kablastos. Uh, no, let's not give it Kablastos. I'm going to give it Kablastos. How many Kablastos? <laughs> well, we got to give a rating system. Did I yeah. like it because it, it was future a, episode? We'll worry about a this goofy fun or yeah, we'll, we'll we'll figure it out. So I think I think mine and Kablastos taste in movies more aligned than your taste in movies. <laughs> yes, Kevin and I like stuff that's been made. A little bit more recently than what you prefer, for the, and for the consumption of humans, yeah, yeah. And you like stuff that's just like you like stuff that's like grainy film stock and bad yes. sound quality oh, and just dark, unintelligible, and that no one's ever love heard it. of. And you're like, and then when the episode comes out, you're like, that's weird. My episode <laughs> about like guys riding motorbikes in circles for three hours, we got very little reviews. But when we do Halloween three, a whole shit ton of people listen. It's weird. Yes. <clears throat> But love us, like us on all the socials. If each one of you told a hundred of your friends to listen to the show, you'd help us. Hey, so. if each one of you told a thousand of your friends, <laughs> if each one of you sent us a million dollars, huh? if you tried to count a hundred friends, how far would you get? I would definitely get into distant, <laughs> distant people, like like not friends. I would say, yeah, that's what I mean. But, yeah. All right. So should I mention what we're doing next week? Next week we're taking the week off. It's the Thanksgiving. We won't be here next week, but listen to yeah. an old episode. Listen to, listen to an old the episode. screams of the, what was it? Screams? Shriek of the Mutilated. Shriek of the Mutilated. Shrieks of the Mutilated. Yep. I, we're going to just watch that it's again It's actually, someday. Tim, I looked it up because we always say shrieks. I looked it up recently. It is actually Shriek of the Mutilated. We're going to watch it again someday. We should watch it again. With other people. Enjoy your time with your families or not. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, uh, hopefully you are listening to this in the United States that mm. is not a smoldering crater. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well. Okay. Is that it? Yep. All right. Bye, everybody. So See you next. Bye. See you in two weeks. This has been a Pity Party Line production. Party line. It's a party I doubt about four line. weeks ago on Halloween, uh, well, we yep. talked, we made jokes about what the popular masks would have been in 1982. And, oh, and, yes, and you're you like, did no. send me this. I saw. So I did. There was a film online because your phone's listened to you about mm-hmm. Halloween costumes in 1982 when the movie it was we actually talked 83. about. Okay. It was actually one year difference. One year difference of the movie yeah. Halloween three when it came out. Cause that movie is about masks and yeah. it was a Yoda. It was a Yoda. There was let me counter. Let me counter. There was a boss. A hog. That was terrible. It was a boss. Hog. <laughs> a little boss. Hog. A little racist kid. I, I want to counter. <laughs> what? 1983 was the year of return. Of the Jedi came back. Rekindling oh. interest in Star Wars. My whole point was 82 was a fallow year for Star Wars. Nobody, 
They would have beaten up a Yoda kid that year. <laughs> no, he was popular. Yep. I remember the Yoda kids in my neighborhood. We all whisked his pants around <laughs> his ankles and threw him over a tree. He said, sad am I. <laughs> so <laughs> pants I'm being 